I call this public caucus to order. The purpose of this caucus is to discuss the transfer of a liquor license to pass Rush LLC for use at Big House Tobacco Outlet, located at 200 Greenridge Street in Scranton, and its intended use. In attendance tonight are Joseph J. Fadden III, CEO, Past Rush LLC, and Attorney Francis X. O'Brien, counsel for Mr. Fadden. Following the presentation by our invited guests, council members may pose questions and offer comments. However, because two councilmen have voiced their concerns and objections to the transfer of the liquor license during recent city council meetings, I will allow Mr. Rogan and Mr. McGough to speak before the remainder of my colleagues. Gentlemen, please begin. Good evening, thank you for seeing us. Again, my name is JJ Fadden. Um, we've been at 200 Green Earth Street now for three years as Big House Tobacco Outlet and what we're looking to accomplish with this transfer of a liquor license is just to add an additional service to what we already do. We're not looking to become much more than we already are. We're just looking to add another product in line into what we've already been doing there at Big House. Um, I'm more than happy to answer any questions. I don't have a great deal to say in the way of you know, what we are, but I know that there was issues raised by the council. I've had an opportunity to read the minutes, and I'd be happy to address any of those. Um, Councilman Rogan, would you like to begin with your questions and comments? Please? Yes, thank you, and we appreciate you coming in to, uh, to answer. Um, I do have a, a number of questions, and most of these actually came from the residents um, in the surrounding Lower Green Ridge area. Um, the first one is, um, where, do you, where do you reside? Is it in Pennsylvania? I reside in Boston, Massachusetts. Boston, Massachusetts, okay. And um, it's a Pennsylvania liquor license for restaurant, correct? Well, my understanding of the liquor law, and Mr. O'Brien could answer more specifically, there's only four different licenses in the state of Pennsylvania, so we're not a golf club or a private club, so yeah. we either had the choice of an R license, and that was it. So that's the license that we're trying to obtain. And now we see on paper, and I don't think myself, and I hope I'm not out of line speaking for Mr. Murgoff, I don't think we have a question with the legality of receiving the license, and it's the impact on the neighborhood that, that we're more concerned about. What is your vision for the final, you know, the final product, whether it be, you know, a tobacco lounge slash restaurant? We're going to be what are you looking to do? That's, that's we're going to be compliant under the Pennsylvania Liquor Control Board ordinances as it regards to having the ability to serve 30 people hot food, but we're not looking to be in the full service restaurant business. We're um, looking to be a cigar bar that has the things that we do now plus the offerings of liquor and beer. We're not looking to be a six pack store, 12 pack store. We don't have the infrastructure for it. We're not going to make that investment. It's not something that we want it to be at any point. And that was you know, something that a lot of people encouraged us to do. It was something that people said the business model makes sense in that location, but I don't want to be in that business. And I'm not looking to you know, impact our neighbors in that way as well. And you know, I would say to this point, we've been a good neighbor. And, you know, for three years in business, I haven't had any direct complaints. We haven't had any police issues or anything else. So it's classified as a restaurant license, but you're not looking to open a restaurant, basically, is what you're saying? We're it's looking just, to be... It's just that classification of license? That's correct. Okay. We're looking to be compliant under the regulation. Now, as far as the compliance, would there be a kitchen? Has that been accomplished yet? Is there a, a working kitchen in the building, or is that something that you're planning on doing? That, that may be a, a point for uh, me to take over. Uh, thank you for giving us the opportunity to come in and explain the, uh, the proposal. Uh, uh, the liquor code definition and requirements for a restaurant means um, food for 30 patrons at all times, the ability to prepare it and serve it, and 400 square feet available to the patrons. Um, and that's what Mr. Fadden will be uh, offering to the public. Uh, he will have food available. Uh, there's no requirement in the liquor code that you ever serve any food. 
Um, but everything will be available and will be legal as the liquor code requirements are. So the liquor code does require, for instance, if you know I walked in, that you would have to be able to have the capacity to serve me food. Liquor code doesn't define food, but there has to be food available. Uh, it can't be Slim Jims and uh, potato chips. It's got to be real food of some sort. So if I wanted to walk in and get a you know cheeseburger or a steak or something, you know, you would have to be you would have to provide that to the customer. But uh, the customer wouldn't have to purchase food. Well, the, the customer doesn't have to purchase food, but as to the types of food, there's no definition in the code. Uh, so it can be, you know, a couple hoagies. It can be, it, it could vary. Um, the liquor board, the laws do not require any minimal amount of food. And every place in Pennsylvania is licensed that way. So they all have to meet the same requirements. They had to meet them the day they opened, and they are are required to continue to meet those same requirements. So it can be potato chips and Slim Jims then? No. no well, then, then what that's, is it then? Well, that's not, I mean, I was. I, I'm just, yeah, I'm, I'm, not, not, the, uh, I'm not an attorney. I'm just, I, just asking no, for no, clarification. And, and that's, it, that's, no, it's a fair question. If, if, if it can't be Slim Jims and potato chips and it's not I, burgers I can tell and fries. You, I can tell you um, I was uh, general counsel of the liquor board for eight years and they would never, they refuse anyone who has something like that. You have to have some level of food. They, although the law doesn't say no potato chips and pretzels and Slim Jims, I can tell you the liquor board wants to see some substantial food. Well, maybe Mr. Fadden can answer because it's your establishment. What is your plan as far as? We are going to be able to serve via microwave some type of hot food, be it a burrito, something that's microwavable. So the, so it's not a restaurant? Under the definition of the liquor law it is, but it's not the traditional restaurant that you and I think of when we go into TGI Fridays or Ruby Tuesdays. Yeah. So basically it would be, and I'm not sure how familiar you are with the area, but. Um, I grew up here. I've lived here for 27 years. I'm a Wilkes alum. Yep. And I've only been out of the area 10 years. And right up, right up the road um, in the Bullshead area, there's a convenience store that has a restaurant um, license where they have the seating and they have a microwave and they have your typical convenience store foods. You know, you could throw a burrito in a, you know, in a microwave, but if you stand out there for five minutes, you realize that their sales, it, it, it's a six pack store. Mm -hmm. You know, you could, I I'm think it's 144 that. ounces is, is, and that's what, what we're hearing from the neighbors that they're concerned about it be, having a, because legally, if the, you receive this license, legally you can open a six-pack store under this license, a de facto six-pack store. Is that correct? That's correct. And okay. I'm, if anyone had an opportunity to come see us, and I have some pictures to share, we are not looking to be the bull's head convenient. We're not looking to be, we're looking to be a nice place that gives someone an opportunity to sit down and enjoy a cigar and have a drink. Can I share these with you? Absolutely. Guys? Thank you, sir. We currently have the same seating that we had offered since the day we opened in October 2009. We've had lounge space and sitting space since then. We've accommodated private parties, fundraisers, bachelor parties. We've had an opportunity to upset the neighbors on a multiple of occasions and have not because we've controlled our clientele. Mm -hmm. We're really halfway down the road in the way of the volume that we do, meaning that we're not expecting to increase the number of people that are coming in per se. We're just looking to offer the people that are already coming to our place an additional service. So something like, you know, I grab a pack of cigarettes, some cigars, and a six-pack to go? Like that? No. I'm looking for someone to come in, order a scotch, buy a cigar, and sit down and either sit in a quiet room and read the paper or sit in one of the TV rooms and watch the game or the news. But would the option for takeout beverages be available? Would the options be available? No, because we don't have the infrastructure for it. We're very pinched on space already. We don't have, we barely have a place to put our vacuum, never mind a cooler that's going to accommodate multiple six-packs and 12-packs. Mm -hmm. 
And as far as um, parking goes, um, I know there is a lot next to the building, a small uh, gravel lot. Is that part of your property or is that the other neighbors? That's part of our property. Okay. And that would be how many cars? About five cars? There's, you can fit eight cars in there. Um, we've had, we have two spots in the garage that's used as well. So the garage will be open for patrons as well? Well, normally the staff uses that. Okay. And um, th this would probably be um, a legal question. After, and after, if this was approved by city council, um, would it then go to our zoning board for a variance? Would that be the next step in the process? Or if we approve it, is that it? Well, if council were to approve it, that starts the whole LCB process. Mm -hmm. We can't do anything unless and until council punches the ticket yeah. to move the license. But having been I'm in sorry. front of zoning already, um, we received a zoning variance for CG three years ago mm -hmm. because contrary to what you would think as you look at that block, it's actually zoned light industrial. Mm -hmm. So we, within the light industrial ranks, you can't have a retail store. So we needed the CG variance to achieve the ability to have a retail store as well as being already located in a light industrial zone yeah I'm, I'm actually pretty familiar with the zoning of that neighborhood there was an incident a few blocks up with um, it was a residential neighborhood that had you know was zoned incorrectly in my opinion in many opinions there was basically a cinder block plant there and I know it's apples and oranges but my concern is in you know, I have nothing I, we've never met before, and my opposition is, is just based on from what I've heard from the neighbors. And what assurances could you make that the neighbors are, they won't be upset and it won't be a nuisance for the neighborhood? Well, all I can say is that we've been there three years, and to my knowledge, there's never been a formal complaint brought to any government agency, and there's never been a personal complaint brought to us. But previously, liquor, alcohol was not served, correct? Well, people were bringing their own liquor and um, bringing in their own beer. We mm -hmm. have the beer distributor right across the street, and people would purchase six packs and, or excuse me, purchase cases in that regard as the distributor, bring them in. People would bring their own bottles in. Okay. And um, just for those that don't know, I know there was um, an issue in front of the zoning board actually right behind your property with the restaurant that just opened. And some, a lot of the neighbors were upset about that. So we have, you know, two changes in this one small, tight-knit neighborhood. And uh, obviously a lot of people have, have questions and concerns. And, and that's the reason why I objected in past readings on this legislation. And finally, just one, one last question, and that was regarding, can you explain what happened with the cigarette rolling machine? Sure. Um, Starting back in May, there was an insertion into the transportation bill that was um, signed on July 7th of this year. Basically, on the 700th page, they amended the Internal Revenue Code to include cigarette manufacturers being as this RYO machine. And for the rest of the council, if you're not familiar with this, it was basically a jukebox size machine that people would put tobacco and loose cigarette tubes into, and they would roll their own cigarettes with it. Um, they classified that as a commercial um, cigarette manufacturing machine. So when President Obama signed that bill July 7th, that for the moment ended RYO. Just later on in mid-August, there was the um, recognition of a restraining order that was already placed on the government from enforcing that. And so basically when you move to August, and I have the actual date right here. Um, on August 22nd, the temporary restraining order was um, recognized by the TTB, meaning they wouldn't enforce what was signed into law on the 7th. And then on September 5th, the circuit court in Ohio um, ended that. So RYO ended September 5th. We moved our machines out July 7th and hadn't had them back since. So there, there aren't any problems with the IRS or the Pennsylvania no. um, Department of Revenue? The, actually, Pennsylvania was very practical on the issue. In this year's budget, they decided a year of study. Okay. Um, which I found to be you know, very prudent in the way that they wanted to figure out what we were, what we do, how we do it, and then come up with a decision on how they'd regulate us. So the state of Pennsylvania was actually very practical on the matter. It was a federal issue, and 
we moved our machines out well before any kind of actual legal standing came into play. All right, thank you. And Councilman McGough, do you have any questions or uh, comments? Just a few leftovers, I guess. Um, will there be a working bar in this? There will be a working bar. We will have, you know, what you would think of as a traditional, you know, four foot high bar with, you know, beer and liquor behind it. It would be a, but it's a component that we've had in our business for a long time already. We've had this piece of furniture, you know, for over a year now. It's just now, instead of being our point of sale station where people check out, it's now going to be a bar. Thank you. Um, what will, what do you foresee the hours of operation being? What, if, if this were approved and uh, you did receive a liquor license, what hours of operation would, um, would you be looking I, I at? I foresee staying within the framework of what we're open right now, which is 9 to 9, Monday through Wednesday, um, 10 to 10, or 10, yeah, 10 to 10 on um, for Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And for the short term, those would be our hours just to see what kind of traction we get, possibly pushing the weekend hours to midnight or 2 a.m. depending on our volume. We're not going to jump into staffing the place and having them sit there and watch television from noon to 2 a.m. We're going to grow into what the volume dictates in the way of, you know, our people now are pretty much trained on, you know, we close at 9 or 10 and they leave. If people linger, you know, I'm not sure if that's going to happen. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. Um, Mr. Fadden, you indicated that you're a resident of Boston, Massachusetts. Um, so since you do not now reside within the city, do you employ a manager who resides in Scranton or within the greater Scranton area? I do. My brother Darren is going to be our bar manager. He is our on-site supervisor now in our retail business. And I'm in Scranton two to three days a week on a good week and three to four days a week on a bad week. Okay. That's every week? That's every week. I own property in the city. My family's been in the same residence for 40 years. Um, my in-laws are the same. You know, they've been here for over 40 years at the same residence. So I have strong roots here. And I had a choice to actually after the RYO decision was brought down that I could have just shuttered my business and had made enough money to go back to Boston and actually open a similar business there and I chose to stay because of my roots here in Scranton. And uh, I think you touched on this earlier but uh, just so we can make the issue uh, even clearer, have the police been called to this location and if so, what number of times and for what complaints? We had one officer come to the location when we had a gentleman try to basically swindle us. He said we overcharged him. We had video and physical evidence to show otherwise. Mm -hmm. And that was resolved without a formal um, report that I'm aware of. I'm sure the officer has it in his, you know, mm -hmm. his dailies, but there was no court action on that or anything. Once the officer saw the videotape and the gentleman saw that he was actually caught, he just walked away. Okay, so in uh, three years of an established business, you would have had only that one incident. That's the only incident that I'm aware of, and I, my employees fill out daily logs on everything they do, and I'm sure that a police calling would have made it into there if I wasn't in town to see it myself. And uh, have you contacted businesses or residents of the adjacent area for their input? I have spoken to some neighbors. Um, I am honestly was surprised to hear Mr. Rogan say that there was an outpouring of concern or downright not wanting us to move forward in this way with our business because I've only gotten positive responses and even to the point the gentleman who brought the zoning action against um, the pizza place behind us came to my brother Darren personally the other day just to make sure we knew that it wasn't an issue with him at all. Okay. Um, Councilman Loscombe, do you have any comments or questions? 
Uh, the only comment I have, uh, most of the questions have been asked and answered, and, and just for the, you know, for my sake again, uh, I think the biggest concern for the neighbors were that it would be a, a regular six pack in, you know, like a convenience store. And I think that's that's probably one of the biggest uh, worries and fears, and uh, I think you have assured us that that wasn't going to be the case, or. Or can you, can you say that's not going to be that the case? That is not going to be the case. And Mr. Lanskab, I hold myself to a standard. I mean, there was opportunities to grab profits early on when we opened with bath salts and synthetic marijuana. We chose not to do that, not only because it was bad for the community, but morally it's not something that I'm looking to do. I'm not going to grab every penny at every risk of you know losing my character along the way. I appreciate that. Because I was uh, one in the forefront for banning the bath salts okay. in this area. But, yeah, uh, bath salts, synthetic marijuana. We never sold it, it and every and there was huge margin in it. I mean, you know, there's was a lot of money to be made, and we lost business because we didn't. But it wasn't something that morally that I wanted to be into. And, and looking at the photos, I mean, uh, I've never been in there. I. Uh, I think we've all driven by. Yes, we know the location, and, uh, and it really is a beautiful is a nice, business. Uh, Thank you. But I think some of the questions have been asked that uh, that I had in mind, so not to be repetitious, I'll pass it along. And it all it almost seems as if I I hadn't considered this earlier until uh, you had mentioned it, or perhaps the attorney did this evening that you are located very close to a beer distributor. And so I, you know, I would tend to think that those who are looking for cases, six packs, et cetera, uh, legally are going to go to the beer distributor and get a, you know, a, a better price. Again, we've tried to be good neighbors with all the surrounding businesses and people and communicate the best we can and you know I'm not looking to take anything out of Pioneer's pocket and you know I really wish that I had the negotiating abilities they did when they got that building built by Walgreens I think that's a fantastic achievement on their part so thank you and Councilman Joyce do you have comments or questions yes <clears throat> um, I know that your intent is to go for a restaurant liquor license um, but you do operate as a smoke shop. What if you end up selling more food down in the long run and that takes away the ability to smoke inside the establishment? Well, um, we we're already qualified under the Clean Indoor Exemption Act for a smoke shop license, which is 90% of your sales have to come from tobacco or tobacco related products. Um, it actually gets much more um, loose after that if we go for the traditional restaurant restriction it's a 20% of other product and then if you go for a cigar bar exemption it actually goes down to 15 so the state's um, regulations are you know they're tiered and you know they're very um, equitable to what we're trying to do and we never want to be outside those numbers that's you know the business model that we're you know looking to put it forth and I don't want to be outside of those regulations okay so your intent is not to really sell that much food at all it's just to add the um, alcohol sales along with the tobacco sales that's correct okay that's all I had that wasn't asked thank you um, so I think, you know, if we summarized, it appears that largely this would be, um, I don't know if this is the correct terminology because I, <laughs> I don't frequent um, these establishments, but a cigar bar. Yes, ma'am. And the food that you'd serve would be more in the nature of snack food. It would be light fare. I mean, like I said, things that can be made be in the microwave. Microwavable. Yes, ma'am. Right. And um, would you consider speaking with uh, any of the residents of the area about concerns they might have so Absolutely. that you could alleviate their concerns? Absolutely. And uh, 
would you contact, you know, would you, or give them some means of contact for you, even through our, our office that we can provide to them? Absolutely, so. and um, Mr. O'Brien just wanted me to tell you that I did knock on every Gardner Avenue door just to try to get someone. I mean, I didn't get a lot of response. I don't know if I went at the right time of day, but I did go down Gardner Avenue and, you know, the surrounding um, businesses as well that have licenses um, at Morgan's and Waldo's. So I just wanted to leave anyone's concerns before it came out. And it kind of, it jumped out in front of us a little bit in the way that it came out in the paper. We didn't have an opportunity to really get in front of it and talk to our neighbors and, you know, fellow businesses. But, you know, I'd be happy to speak to anyone that had any concerns. Okay, thank you. If there are no further questions, uh, this, uh, well, first I should say, I want to thank both of you gentlemen very much for uh, attending and participating in this public caucus. And if you have no further comments and council members have no further comments or questions, this public caucus is adjourned. Thank you for the opportunity and for your consideration. Thank you. Thank you.
rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of reflection for our servicemen and women throughout the world and for all those who died in the last week, particularly Raymond Arden, devoted husband, father of city employee Todd Arden, and grandfather, and his dear family and friends who suffer his loss. Also, please remember in your prayers my good friend Betty Fenton, who was hospitalized again recently, and former city clerk Jay Saunders, who is in the care of hospice. Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Here. Mr. Rogan? Here. Mr. Loscombe? Here. Mr. Joyce? Here. Mrs. Evans? Here. Dispense with the reading of the minutes, please. Third order, 3A, payment in lieu of taxes from the Harrison House Personal Care Home in the amount of $500. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3B, tax assessor's report, hearing date to be held on a November 14, 2012. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. Do we have any clerk's notes tonight? No, Mrs. Evans. Thank you. Do any council members have announcements at this time? I just uh, very quickly, uh, we received it in, the, in our mail. Uh, the Lackawanna Heritage Valley uh, is announces a groundbreaking for the Archbold to German Trail, uh, the newest section of of that trail. Uh, it's on Monday, November 19th, 2012, at 2:30 p.m. It says the Laurel Street Trailhead Trailhead in Archbold. So I, I'm assuming that the yeah they're breaking ground for the you know, to put a trail connecting Archbold to German. Uh, I know they're moving in the other direction as well, down through uh, into Music and Taylor Old Ford. So when this is completed, uh, it will pretty much connect the entire state. Uh, that is the grand plan of it. But this is the newest part of the trail to be opened. And if anyone's interested as a runner uh, and utilizing the trails at times, uh, um, you know, they're a great, great service to and great value to uh, the community, but it's there. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Yes. There will be an apple pie sale at the Elm Park United Methodist Church, which is located at the corner of Linden Street and Jefferson Avenue on November 17th. Nine-inch homemade apple pies will be sold. Orders are required in advance. Regular unbaked pies will be sold for $10 each. Unbaked pies with no sugar added, which will be made with Splenda, will be sold for $11 each. Regular baked pies, which will be, or, uh, will be $11 each. And baked pies with no sugar added, which will be made with Splenda, will be sold for $12 each. To place an order for the pies, please call 342-8263. The last day for orders will be November 13th, so hurry up and order your pies if you plan on doing so. You're getting me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> the Fraternal Order of Eagles in Scranton will conduct its annual craft fair this Saturday, November 10th, beginning at 10 a.m. Various crafts and holiday, holiday items will be available for purchase. All proceeds will fund a Christmas party for foster children in our community. For additional information, please call the club at 961-5495.
The Mary Mother of God Parish in North Scranton will hold its annual roast beef dinner this Sunday, November 11th, at Sterna's Restaurant, located on West Market Street, from noon to 5 p.m. Tickets are $10 for adults and $5 for children under the age of 10. Also, raffle tickets to win a customized NFL jersey will be sold. Come out and enjoy a delicious Sunday dinner with your family. St. Joseph's Melkite Catholic Church, located at 130 North St. Francis Cabrini Avenue in West Scranton, will conduct its annual spaghetti dinner fundraiser on Wednesday, November 14th from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Takeout dinners will be available beginning at 4 o'clock p.m. Tickets are $8.50 for adults, $4 for children under the age of 10, and may be purchased at the door. Take a break from cooking and treat yourself to this tasty pasta dinner. Pizza by Papa's will hold its third annual Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Fundraiser on Tuesday, November 13th and Wednesday, November 14th at its restaurant located at 303 North Washington Avenue in downtown Scranton. 50% of the proceeds will be donated to the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network. For details, call 346-2290 or email charity at pizzabypapas.com. Council would also like to thank Mr. Tom Welby for his assistance this evening. He is broadcasting live tonight's meeting. And finally, City Council wishes to congratulate Senator Bob Casey, Mrs. Kathleen Kane, and of course, President Barack Obama on their victories in Tuesday's election. And that's it. Fourth order, citizens' participation. Our first speaker tonight is Liz Hubbard. She's still out there. No. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Hubbard is no longer available. Doug Miller. Good evening, Council. Doug Miller, Scranton. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Just like to begin once again uh, with Engine 7, uh, letting everyone know it's still not open at this point. Uh, again, jeopardizing the health, safety, and well being of the residents of West Side. Yeah, but I would like to remind everyone that there will be another. Uh, town hall style meeting, so to speak, uh, next Wednesday at 7 p.m. over at Kaiser Valley Community Center in regards to uh, the closure of Engine 7. And I would just like to encourage uh, all West Side residents who are affected uh, to please come out and demand that the stations open and hold Chief da Tom Davis and Mayor Chris Doherty accountable for their actions. Uh, they've consistently shown time and time again that they do not care. And I think they need to be put in their place once and for all and that they need to know that we won't tolerate it. Uh, and we all need to come out in full force and protest what they've done. Uh, on to some of the issues in today's paper dealing with uh, a couple matters. Uh, the first uh, is in regards to the single tax office uh, that we've been made aware that officials will uh, be going around uh, to several businesses door to door uh, to ensure that businesses are displaying their business privilege tax uh, licenses to show that they are paying the tax and that they are paying their fair share. Uh, and obviously reading this this morning it did uh, make me ask myself, you know, if we're going to go out and knock on businesses, uh, why not go up the street here and knock on the uh, university's door and go inside and knock on Chick-fil-A's door, knock on Starbucks's door and Quizno's door and the Mexican restaurant that's up there. Let's see where their licenses are. Uh, I'm sure you're not going to find any because they haven't been paying their business privilege tax. And I think we need to hold them accountable. We've lost out on millions and millions of dollars for decades because we've allowed them Again, we've allowed them to get a free ride, and we haven't done anything about it. Past councils who turned a blind eye to it, this administration turned a blind eye to it, and I think now is the time to take action on this. In a distressed city that's in jeopardy of falling into bankruptcy, something we don't want to see. And we need the revenue, and we need it now. And I think now is the time to go up there and 
hold them accountable for their actions and make sure they are paying their fair share. And I'm hopeful that this council will do that. Uh, on the commuter tax, uh, this was also uh, in the paper today. Uh, several municipalities are uh, trying to join forces together to protest uh, our proposed commuter tax. Uh, today we had uh, Old Forge, who all of a sudden now uh, wants to team up with the Mayfield mayor, I believe his name's Al Chellick, uh, in challenging our commuter tax. Uh, Clark Summit at their meeting wants to now impose their own commuter tax on our residents. And, you know, it's just, it's becoming quite frustrating at this point. Uh, as you know, I am a supporter of the commuter tax. And I understand it's, it's not a, uh, a likable tax. And I'm not claiming to be in favor of taxes, believe me. Uh, I wish we didn't have to have them at all. But it's, it's part of reality and it is what it is. Um, it's part of our recovery plan and we're asking to pay your fair share. Old Forge all of a sudden now, they want to challenge it. They want to make an issue. You know, it's, it's quite frankly frustrating that all these municipalities are just all coming out of the woodwork in opposition to it. You're utilizing our roads, our bridges, our public safety each and every day by your residents coming into our community. And we're asking you to contribute to it. You have an old Forge resident who works down in downtown Scranton. And God forbid a tragedy were to occur, a fire where we needed an engine to respond, or one of our police officers to respond. Who's paying for that? We are. All we're, ask <clears throat> all we're asking is for their residents to contribute a small fee to that. I find it only to be fair. You're utilizing our essential services. There's no reason why you can't contribute a small fee to that. It's not fair to our taxpayers who contribute to it and let them come in and get a free ride. It's for three years. That's all we're asking. And, uh, you know, with Clark Summit wanting to enact their own commuter tax, let them enact it. That's what they feel they want to do. But as a Clark Summit councilwoman stated, they feel that we're punishing their residents. It's not a punishment. It's paying your fair share. And that's all this is. It's not political. If you want to enact a commuter tax, go right ahead. You've had plenty of time. Go ahead and enact one. You could have done it years ago. What's stopping you? Go ahead. Do it. But we're not making it political. We're not punishing you. It's your fair share. That's what it is. It's paying your fair share. And that's what we've talked about with the nonprofits, and that's all we're asking out of the commuters. We don't need to make this a political issue, and uh, that's all for tonight. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Lee Morgan. Good evening, Council. Good evening. Good evening. Um, can somebody tell me the status of my right to knows? I, I did some right to know requests in regard to Council, and they were sent down to Council. And I'm just trying to figure out if somebody can tell me where they stand. I'm not aware. Uh, they were sent to Council, if I, if I may, Mrs. Evans. Yes, certainly. Uh, they were forwarded to council from the business administrator who is the right to know officer. Uh, they do not fall into the right to know guidelines as far as what the requests were. If Mr. Morgan would like to come into the council office, I can discuss that with him and provide him with information uh, that would fall into the right to know guidelines and maybe perhaps answer the uh, underlying questions um, within his request. Thank okay. you, Mrs. Craig. Okay, because I, I, I am going to follow up on that, but I think those were the two most important questions that any resident could ask in this city or the people opposed to the commuter tax outside the city. It's important to know what happened to these sections of the Home Rule Charter and if they were or weren't used. And I think it's time for the government to stop hiding behind what we have a right to know and what we don't have a right to know. Because I think the people outside the city are most certainly correct in opposing the commuter tax. Um, the obligations of Scranton City Government were to protect its residents and provide services and make sure that the government was functioning the way it should function. Now, some people have come here and asked, made statements regarding people coming to visit our city. Well, as far as I know, there's a lot of funds that come in for paving roads and maintenance of bridges, it's state funding, federal funding. And you know, you have to ask yourself, you know, with, in my own personal opinion, with all this borrowing, I don't see the city being able to sustain it. 
to be real honest with you. You know, a judge can sit and have a hearing and determine he's going to let the city borrow unfunded debt. To be real honest with you, I think everybody can see what's occurring in the city. It's just a total lack of political leadership, not today, but for decades. And now what we're saying to people outside the city is, well, look, we only need a little bit of your money. And you know, you have to ask yourself, you know, that on the national level, you know, with the election that's taken place and now them talking about the fiscal cliff that the nation's in, I think we haven't been served very, very well by the political people we've elected. To be bluntly honest, they've done a terrible job. I mean, the fiasco federally is 40 cents of every dollar has been borrowed. The city, well, I don't know how far we are along that line, but I can tell you that we've siphoned every bit of wealth out of this city we could pull out of it. And then we have a council that talks about nonprofits, and in my opinion, look at the junior high school and look at Scranton Lace. They're not going to be any benefit to this city. And that's my contention, because when you invest money, it gives you a return. We're trying to salvage buildings, and it's great to salvage a building, but we're losing whole neighborhoods. We can all talk about many of the issues, and we get no, no resolution from council on hardly anything. In my opinion, I see the council as a borrow and spend instrument an instrument to hold the residents of the city hostage for more tax revenue, for a conduit for special interest, um, big money flowing through council, to spe through council for special projects and special people. But the average people in this city, they're near minimum wage. And then we turn around and we blame Austin Burke or the Scranton Times. And to be honest with you, that's not where the blame lies. Now, the council has the powers of subpoena and investigation. That's what I'd like to know. I'd like to know how many investigations and how many subpoenas council has done since the 70s. Not just this council, but all councils. How many special investigations have we had? I think, uh, I just think it's really uh, a terrible thing when you have a hard time getting information from your government. Now, maybe it doesn't fall under the right to know laws. So then maybe you have to go to the Court of Common Pleas and ask them for the right to get this information. But you know something? When you tax residents and you tax their property and you borrow and you borrow and you borrow, you know, it's nice to talk about things taking place in the community. But you know something? Sooner or later, the way things are going, we won't have a community. I grew up here with over 100,000 people. We're down to a little near 70,000. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Gerard Hetman. Good evening, Council. Good evening. Good evening. Gerard Hetman from the Lackawanna County Department of Community Relations. Uh, to begin this evening, the franchise currently known as the Wilkesbury, Scranton Wilkesbury Yankees will be hosting the big reveal event this coming Wednesday, November 14th from 5.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. at Genetti Manor, 1505 North Main Avenue in Dixon City, with the line, come one, come all, let's have a ball. And this is the event, if you notice, I said the franchise currently known as, because this is the event where the franchise will reveal their new name, new colors, new logo, new mascot, et cetera, et cetera. Basically, the whole branding, uh, to use a marketing term, will be revealed to the public at this event, which will feature food, games, live entertainment, uh, face painting, caricature artists, inflatables, and a whole bunch of other carnival type attractions and events at this particular event. And it's a chance for the community to come out and be a part of the revealing of the new identity of our local franchise as a community, everyone is welcomed. And I can say from having been involved with local sports teams and having been to a number of team announcement events, whether it be names or players or the announcement of a new franchise, in various capacities, I've rarely seen an event like this where the public is invited to share in a big moment in local sports history and in local commerce, local infrastructure. It's really something unique. Most of the time you turn the TV on, the five o'clock news, you open the newspaper the next day and say, oh, there's a new sports team coming, or oh, the sports team signed this person. 
This is something a little bit different. And it's something designed to open up to the community. So everyone is invited next Wednesday, November 14th, from 5.30 to 8.30 p.m. at Genetti's to find out whatever the name of the new team is. I have no idea. And, Mr. Uh, Hetman, yes, may I just interrupt? Yes. If they choose trolley frogs, I promise you that I will never buy a ticket to see them. <laughs> we'll we'll see what happens. That's one of the names. The trolley? Trolley frogs. So uh, I, I have being suggested. I have no insider <laughs> information, so I, I can neither confirm nor deny uh, what the name is. But we'll, we'll have to see on Wednesday. <laughs> um, the second item, I do actually have a letter on that I can give to uh, Council's office, but I would like to share just a few highlights of this program, uh, which is from the Lackawanna County Children and Youth Services Agency uh, regarding their annual ANGEL program, which assists children who are under the care of Lackawanna County Children and Youth to have a memorable Christmas and enjoyable Christmas by providing Christmas gifts to children under their care. Uh, last year, the program actually assisted more than 1,000 children in Scranton and Lackawanna County in providing Christmas gifts to those children who otherwise may not have a Christmas to remember or Christmas to enjoy in that same capacity. So the program is run through the Lackawanna County Children and Youth Office, and the two contacts, just to uh, make you aware, are Gloria Liuzzo, who can be contacted 570-963-6781, extension 1301, or Lisa Sohera, 570-963-6781, uh, extension 1188. And normally, they ask for a contribution of approximately $100 uh, to take care of the gifts and the Christmas cheer for each child. But they've modified the program in recent years so that citizens and also community groups, whether it be a church group, civic organization, school group, can contribute as a group, or individuals or groups can contribute any amount of funding or they can contribute toys, uh, new unwrapped toys to the program. Uh, however people want to chip in, it's flexible and accessible to all. So I do have a letter uh, regarding that that I'll give to uh, Mrs. Craig or Ms. Marciano after the meeting and you can share it with anybody in the community you know who may be willing to, looking for a good way to participate in serving the community this holiday season. So that's all I have for this evening and thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Andy Spraglia, Citizen Scranton, fellow Scrantonians. Good evening. From your literature here, you're planning to borrow $40 million this year. What are we getting for this $40 million that you plan to borrow? Tell me, what when it says a portion of the 203A, what portion are we paying with that 20 million you want to plant? What portion of the B? What portion of the C? Nowhere did I say you were recalling any of that. So what are we getting for this 40 million? Debt ran up by previous mayors and councils. This doesn't make sense. I don't know exactly how we got into a position where we have to borrow $40 million. I know I made a stink when they borrowed the $72 million, but at least I got a couple of buildings sitting there that they used the money for. Wasn't happy with the life fixtures, but that's the way life goes. Does anybody know what portion of these A, B, C, D, 73s were paying? I didn't see anything about we're recalling the bonds and borrowing money to pay off the bonds, hoping we can get them at a lower rate. I don't understand exactly what you're trying to do other than borrow $40 million. And I don't know what effect that's going to have on our tax rate. But if you want to answer, if you know what exactly what it would be. Uh, Mr. Spiraglia, I'm going to address some of that under motions tonight and it will be um, further explained at next week's meeting you're going to go in debt right in depth you're not going to give a blanket thing in other words you're going to say we're we're paying off the interest and actually so much of the the debt when you say portion that doesn't mean much portion could be anything like you put a portion of cream into your coffee 
We want it exactly what's going on. Now the other debt, does, I guess the nine million, let's go with the round them off to nine, nine million that we're paying off the unfunded debt that was built up this year, last year, so forth. At least we understand that. You had a 12% tax increase for one portion of it. Now you're up for a second portion of it. That interest rate, what was it, 8.9, isn't very favorable to anything. You'd be better off, way, way better off, trying to get a bond issue to cover every darn thing, even if you borrow 60 million. At least you got 20 years to pay it off for 30 years. These, these bonds you want to pay off in 10. At 10 years, that's like $4 million per issue. You got, the mission, you got the one million for the bond, the payment, and then you got another almost a million in interest. On the one bond, that's two. On the second bond, that'd be another two, which would be in the neighborhood of four million that we're paying off for the next 10 years. That's $40 million over them 10 years. That affects the tax rate. I wish I had the audit I can give you a presentation complete on it if I had the figures in front of me. But you don't have them in front of you, and we don't have them in front of me. That's the problem with this city. And you don't realize you've been sat back on that audit for so long because they don't want us to. That's why you were in trouble to begin with. If you had them audits in the very beginning when you were making out our dear tax base, you wouldn't have had all that. You wouldn't have had nine point some million or eight point nine million in unfunded debt for a year. Now that's the second year we had the same thing. And I guess it would be in the third year too. Except in nineteen uh, I mean twenty thirteen it's even gonna be worse. I don't know exactly what's going on, but when you talk about unfunded debt and paying off a portion of bond issues. You tell the people what portion of that bond issue is being paid off and how much is left to be paid off and at what period of time we got to pay it off in. Other than that, we're gonna sink into the abyss. Like, you know, why keep saying that? We are sinking into that abyss. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Joe Talamini, City of Scranton. I've been a political junkie for over 70 years now, and I want to say one thing about this past election. I worked East Mountain, and I think we had better than a 70% turnout. And I was absolutely amazed at how great these people were up there. I also would like to tell the council that you have been <laughs> recipient of many commendations from those people. They said they are very, very pleased with the decorum of this council, the way things are conducted, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. However, two incidents did arise, which I think is worthy of note. Number one, Mr. Rogan, I'd like to address this to you as well uh, in your other capacity. There were at least eight people that came to me during the course of the day. Their relatives were disenfranchised for voting because they were working on Sandy at a state could not get back in. There was no provision for them to vote. Now they were told, either by PP&L or by the contract that they were working for, that they could vote in New Jersey or New York, which is where they were working. They were not allowed to vote a Pennsylvania ballot, which I explained to them that's inconceivable. You would be allowed to vote a Pennsylvania ballot in New Jersey or New York. But I think some provision should be there. This is a unique situation, I realize that. Some provision should be available in the voting act that would allow these people to vote in an emergency like that. They're first responders. There's no question about that. They went over and ab above what they're expected to do. They were working out of state. There's no way they can get back. Their relatives came up to me and asked if there's anything I could do. And I said, I can't do anything at all. The election rules are the election rules. But there should be some provision in the election law that says these people could cast an emergency absentee ballot if necessary somewhere along the line. I would like this council to go ahead. I've already addressed the subject with the Lackawanna County Commissioners. I would like this council to submit a letter to the state asking for some kind of provision to be made 
in a situation like this. Even though it's unique, it probably will never happen again. But if it does, these people should not be disenfranchised because they're working out of state on an emergency situation. And I mean, for them to send their relatives up to ask, that shows you they were really dedicated people. That's number one. Number two, I was also surprised at the fact that the firehouse we're working at on East Mountain Road is in service, but because of the present situation with traffic, they really have a problem. They cannot come across the Harrison Avenue Bridge, as you well know. Now they cannot come down Music Street, which means that they're deferred more. I don't know how much, how much more response time it would take. Mr. Loskin could probably address that. But for them to make a circuitous route to go over to a fire outside their area, it's ridiculous. There's got to be some kind of provision made. I don't know what the answer is. I'm not a fireman. I don't know what the answer is. But I know I heard from several firemen up there that they're very, very disturbed of this situation. So whether it's keeping the other firehouses open or what, but it's a hazard. There's no question about that. And another thing, I'd like to commend a couple of people who did work the polls this year. They were novices, but they came up and worked. One gentleman who lives on Orchard Street is the father of six small children. And he took his time and went up and worked that poll from 6.30 in the morning until 9 o'clock in the evening. And another young lady who happens to be a waitress on her day off went up and worked another poll. I mean, there, there are dedicated people in this town. Not very many of them. As you know, I've always been <laughs> complaining about the apathy of the voters in this town, but I can honestly say that this was a surprise, a very pleasant surprise. And also, once again, I would like to say that they did compliment ECTV on their coverage of these meetings, and I didn't know how many people watched ECTV, but apparently there's an awful lot of people out there, and they're not only from Scranton. They're from Clark Summit, they're from places I've never even heard of in Pennsylvania. But they do watch ECTV, so if there's any funding that's being held up, I wish you people would reconsider it and make sure that the funding gets to them, because they are doing one good job. And again, compliments to the council. This is not for me, but from the voters. They think the decorum here is exceptionally fine. And thank you. Thank, thank you. you. <clears throat> good evening, council. Dave good Dobson. Evening. Good evening. Resident of the city. Um, also, I noticed on 6D, uh, it's been my understanding that the uh, $178 does not entirely cover trash removal. And I have a question as to whether we'll let that pass. Um, Tax exempts could be charged extra money in view of the fact that they do not pay property tax for trash removal. Um, if there's uh, millions of dollars being required to the DPW um, to uh, subsidize the trash removal, the $178 per, uh, per household, then uh, perhaps they should be paying more because they're certainly not paying property tax. Uh, once again, it's not your issue, but the school district has a shortfall. And my advice is that they should start repairing schools instead of building new ones, and uh, maybe their, uh, their uh, finances will improve. And. Uh, Somebody from the DPW asked me to make a mention that there's leaf removal this week instead of papers. Is that this week? It's my understanding that the... I, I saw trucks yes. out the other day. Mm -hmm. It's my understanding okay, that it so is. Okay, so don't put your papers out and leave them laying there for two weeks because uh, that's some people, what some people do. And... Uh, I have a question. Will the colleges appro oppose property tax on business uh, business taxes, uh, taxable businesses within their uh, borders, such as uh, restaurants and so forth? I mean, they're opposing the parking tax. Uh, so 
you know, that's a, basically a private business situation, practically. And once again, I'd like to see them zoned in, and if they want to expand any further, then they can pay on the whole enchilada. And I also have a question. Uh, I've been reading in the paper, if anybody could find out, our medical school's constantly on some type of probation because, and they negotiated with the university and uh, the negotiations seem to fall through. And I mean, this is an instance where the university could be a great help to the city because we have a medical school on academic probation constantly there they need to affiliate with a university and seeing as we have one a few blocks away I don't see what the problem is I certainly hope it's not ideological and uh, on this bond issue uh, I'd like to see some I'm going to keep an open mind I'm not going to comment on that greatly this week but an itemization of exactly what bills are to be paid off so they do get paid off and whoever's going to manage the money is locked in to paying off and using the money that they do uh, what, what it was designated for and not shipping money back and forth um, it's uh, concerning when we start borrowing that high of a, a rating and uh, uh, amount of money and also uh, keeping in mind that these banks are being handed major banks are being handed government uh, money from the government the Federal Reserve and every time they downgrade our credit rating they make all the more money on interest and it's really a shame because three or four years ago they were on their way to extinction if the government didn't bail them out. We've got nothing from, for the average city from this bailout. We've gotten nowhere. Uh, they get handed money at 1% or a uh, fraction of a percent or whatever, and uh, then they turn around and they want to charge us some ungodly rate like 8 or 9%. I mean, what are they afraid of that we're going to pack our city up and move somewhere else? Come on. <laughs> it's, we're not going anywhere. Um, and the Golden Parrot, the election, I have some uh, information for some people. Money can't buy you love. U.S. Chamber of Commerce, Sheldon Adelson, and Carl Rove, save your money the next time. And I agree with uh, Joe Talamini. Uh, it struck me that we should have in Pennsylvania an absentee ballot for any person that has to work. I used to drive 500 miles a week to work and uh, back and forth and I was packing my tools up and rushing home just to get in on the last half hour of voting. If there was a line there, which there wasn't because it was a little rural town, I would have lost the opportunity possibly to vote. So uh, it's really time that we change. Uh, I read through the Federal Labor Standards Act in some states they release you, uh, the, your employer has to release you for an hour or two or what have you, but uh, here uh, in Pennsylvania there's nothing. It's supposed to be the, the start of democracy. So thank you and have a good night and for all of these big contributions, thousands of suitcases full of $20 bills. Bok, bok, bok. Money don't buy you love. <laughs> Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, congratulations. I guess you did pretty good the other day. Yes, we did. All right. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to address council? Hey, hey Chrissy. Hey, Chrissy. Where's your hat tonight? No hat? Hey, the Jack, truck's left the without you. Yeah, because it was today. No, it's the, it's the seven? Somebody told me to open this. We can hear down there. Back open the herd. I thought I've been hearing. Oh, oh yeah? Hear yeah. Hey, Frank, what's this week, buddy? Football quiz, what do you think? Scrat all the way this week or what, Frank? What do you think? Yeah. Who's, who's, who's the one you think? <laughs> I always Scrat wins. And that one, too. Good luck. Thanks, Take Chrissy. Take care, Chrissy. Is there anyone else who would like to address council? 
Oh, good evening, Council Marie Schumacher, resident and taxpayer. Good evening. Uh, I'm glad to see that wily waskel with the uh, bow tie down there <laughs> that he came back because he promised me some information tonight. Do you have it? Yes, I do. Yay! Uh, I'll, I'll say yes and no. Uh, <laughs> I, I did get the answers from uh, rental registration and I wrote them down and I should have put them on my hand or my forehead because I thought, but I, I can give you a, sort of a synopsis and then I'll give you the. And, and, and did they, did and they, oh, go ahead. Right now, the, the total number of, the total number of properties in the database is around 1,400, uh, increased by, from the original by about 100 or more. Uh, the total collections up to this point are at about 40,000. Which only, re which represents, there are still, and I, again, I'm trying to remember what was given to me. Um, I believe there's still somewhere around 70% of the properties that have not responded. Now, I will say that the day I was in talking to Mr. Seitzinger about it, um, on his desk, he, he showed me that they had, you know, there were three um, letters that they have received with the rental registration, uh, you know, revenues included. So um, it, is, it is being actively pursued. Uh, the gentleman that's, uh, yeah. that's been doing the uh, rental registration is out every day uh, trying to improve the database. And please hold Mrs. Schumacher side. Yes. I, I know I'm yeah. talking uh, <laughs> too much. Um, but they are actively working at it and uh, as for other info yeah as I say the richest source would be to go to the county and ask for that list of people who are billed at an address different than the taxable property and that still has not been done apparently not apparently not <laughs> that's really makes you wonder and uh, again uh, yeah. I'll, just a quick response we did I did talk to the gentleman with red, rental registration and um, and we did talk about a, a mass mailing based on the assessment, you know, from the assessment. Uh, did, did anybody contact the, the um, sewer authority who has a person who goes out? And that, I, I did not ask that. I don't know. Okay. Oh, good. He's back. I won't have to go out of order. <laughs> Uh, do we have the loan, the loan list from OECD tonight, and I, how many are on it, and how many are delinquent? I have two emails I received from Linda that I didn't get a chance. I was on vacation all of last week. Um, I'll get back to you tomorrow morning on that. I'll send you an email, and um, if I didn't receive it, I will contact Linda. Though. Okay. What about the Paisano partnership? Did you did you find out whether that was part of the? Uh, the guarantee that if those properties that are on the market were part of the guarantee for the quarter million dollar no interest loan again i was sifting through the emails i do oh. know i have three re i do have three replies from linda but i didn't get that far down the chain oh. yet <laughs> okay okay mr joyce uh could you explain to me why you are uh, counting on only two and a half million dollars in commuter tax next year and then four million in each of the following years what's different Yes. Um, actually, this was an issue that was brought up by Pell as well. Um, in the first year, uh, they explained to me that collections are usually slow, being that the tax is new, um, they, people have to get into the mode of paying it, and also that the last quarter most likely wouldn't be collected until the following year, which would translate into $3 million, but to be on the safe side, it would, Pell suggested that $2.5 million would be realized. Okay, and then what fills the hole in 2016 and beyond of that, that $4 million hole when, it, when the commuter tax goes away? Well, at that point, we would have to see where we are um, and, and address the situation at that point. But right now, at this point, there is no source of revenue that would 
fill that hole after the recovery plan is that after the recovery the three plan that's why yeah, I, I really wish you had done five but you didn't so okay and then what is the status of the city's classification change where is that now and uh, how many more wickets do they have to go through before we become a city of the third class I would have to uh, defer to attorney Hughes for that information <laughs> Santa Claus is making a list and checking it twice no. <laughs> there's nothing being done on that okay who's who's whose ball is I mean whose court is the ball in or just nothing on either side nothing oh okay uh, and then uh, I last week I was remiss uh, I meant to talk to start off by thanking the DPW because when we had all that rain they were out doing the the streets to get the the leaves off so the gutters didn't and the storm drains weren't blocked and they really they were out early and and they did a great job and then with respect to the uh, basketball or the baseball team um, after looking at that list I would go with none of the above personally <laughs> thank you see you next week thank, thank you, you very much Bob Martin, 420 Adams Avenue. Uh, first, I want to talk about the uh, engine company. Uh, there have been many people talking about engine seven being closed. Well, well engine four has been closed a lot of times, too. Um, I think I've been hearing on a scanner, and I don't know, Jack, maybe you can answer this. Uh, engine four has been browned out, but they're, they've been in service. Sometimes, uh, I think I've been hearing them on the scanner that they have engine four, but they're not in full. They still have their times when they're... That's correct. They're yeah, still being okay. browned out. You know, I just wish, you know, I was talking to Dan before she came in. I just wish there was, we could have, you know, those engine companies open all the time because, like you said, you can have as many trucks there as many, but if you don't have the engine companies, it ain't gonna matter, but you know, you, you know, you, somebody had brought that up about the, you know, engine ten. That that's gonna cause a problem because that Spruce Street complex. If I ain't, if I have heard right, that might not be fixed until between either Mar between March or June of next year. I mean that that I don't know if they ever caught that truck, but I'll tell you, yeah. <laughs> they, they did it. Oh, they really ruined that bridge real bad. And, you know, and, and, you know, the engine companies are not allowed to go over Harrison. I know they're going to be, they're going to be fixing the Harrison Avenue Bridge, what, 2014 or something like that? Is, it that, is that the truth? Well, it's, 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 I think the plans are complete and everything. It, it, hopefully it'll be started next year. I think they're waiting until the Mulberry Street corridor was completed. Oh, too. I see. Uh, so. To alleviate some of that traffic talk but, about the we can't drive the fire trucks over right. there uh, as I, it I, is i'm happy that uh all these new lights are going up and i i talked about uh <laughs> you know I, I i don't know you know those big little things that they have on top the people are saying that they're going to be taking your picture but i i think i was talking to somebody they're 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 mostly for the synchronization to keep the lights going you're correct and I, and I heard uh, you know once they get everything in there you know that they will have all those lights will work good because I'll tell you I was downtown right where the school or the coach buses and, and boy they had everything blocked up but you know we, those things they have to be done uh, mention about the nonprofits uh, I know attorney use was talking about this at one time uh, the schools that are closed now, okay, that are, you know, like Bishop Hand and stuff, if I am mistaken, in order for them to be considered uh, taxable, they have to be closed at least a year. Is that true, attorney use? Like, one year. Because I know 
Bishop Hannah has been closed for a while. Like the one, no, I think we need to, you know, go after that and make up a list and and go after and, and you know the tax on that. You know. And it just money, money that can be made. Um, and then another thing I want to talk about, uh, I know this is an old issue. Um, they still ever have plans to, uh, you know, the old railroad, sta you know how that you, they wanted to open up that railroad station, you know, before you go over the bridge. Mm -hmm. You know, I think Mr. Donahue was involved in it and then there was a problem. You ever, is there anything going to go on with that at all? Do you know? You haven't heard anything, right? No, I've not heard anything. Because really, it's, it's, it's an eyesore, you know? Yes. But uh, I just want to mention that. And um, finally, I'd like to wish uh, uh, Scranton High School good luck in the playoffs, even though I wish West Side was in there, <laughs> a big West Sider. But at least, I, I mean, uh, they went undefeated. And I, I really think they have a good shot of, of taking the state. And uh, again, good luck to Scranton High School. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. Martin. Is there anyone else who cares to address council? 5A, 5A motions. Councilman McGough, do you have comments or motions this evening? Yes, please. Um, first of all, a couple of people that uh, congratulations in the election to um, our local legislators. Um, I. I believe, it, uh, well, first Kevin Haggerty, Marty Flynn, and I believe that Mr. Sid Michaels uh, Kavulich also represents part of the city of Scranton. If I, not I yet, or that wasn't changed. Okay, but, but anyhow, you know, congratulations if, to if them. If I could interrupt, because as you began, I realized I left someone, <laughs> I left someone out earlier, and that would have been uh, Matt Cartwright. That was next on the list. <laughs> yes, for uh, Congress, and we give him our heartiest congratulations as well. And also, I think uh, we would be ref uh, that we should uh, congratulate uh, Representative uh, Barletta and uh, also uh, Mr. Rogan that he uh, will keep a job uh, <laughs> you know, for the next four years uh, or two. two years, I'm sorry. Um, but yes, congratulations to all of those people in the election. It, um, uh, I, I just would like to make one comment. I, uh, elections seem to have become, um, have gotten away from um, political ideologies and have become more about demonizing your opponent um, in the process. And uh, I think it's a sad commentary on um, where elections have gone, where our politi political process has gone. Um, and I'll put in a plug, I think one of the the things that we we really need to do uh, is to reintroduce civics education into our our school systems. Uh, I think that that was taken out and less emphasis placed on it. Um, at least in my teaching career, the emphasis was removed. But I think it's something uh, that we really need to look into and to um, reintroduce so that we can get back to the type of political process that we all want and desire. Um, on the baseball team, uh, I did make a joke about the, uh, the name, um, but uh, having been uh, an original ticket holder, season ticket holder, uh, and having also worked uh, at the, the stadium in the past, I am glad to see that the team, whatever the name is, um, is transforming itself back to a more fan-friendly um, environment. Uh, I think that was lacking in the last few years and it had driven away a number of people. But I am happy to see that uh, the community is being involved in the process and uh, hopefully the return of the scranton wilkes team will be a huge success and uh, attendance will um, yeah, will go up. Um, I, I will say I've enjoyed my association with the, the team in the past and I think it's great for the community, for the area, and hopefully this is a, a success on the sort of second go-round with the um, scranton wilkes barre AAA franchise. Um, next. 
on, on the agenda tonight is an appointment to the zoning board. Uh, I, I would just like to take a brief moment to explain a little bit the process that we went through to arrive at that. Uh, it, it certainly was a little bit different than what we have done in the pa that what has been done in the past. Uh, we received, I believe it was seven um, letters of interest from people who, you know, seven letters from people who were interested in going on to the zoning board to fulfill the unexpired term of Mr. Wilson. And uh, Mrs. Evans asked if I would review those, and I did, and I contacted the other members of council, um, suggested two names to everyone. Uh, the consensus, the best consensus that was received was the you know, approval of all members of council for uh, Mrs. Wardell's appointment to that position. Uh, I, I think that the process that we used in doing this uh, is a much better way of appointing people. Uh, the, the zoning board, I believe, is the only entity to which we have that opportunity. And in the past, it has been sort of just a selection by one member of council and approved by everyone else. I, I just thought that this process um, offered more input from all members of council and uh, perhaps it's something that we can look at for future um, appointments to the zoning board. Um, but uh, I would like to um, prematurely uh, congratulate Mrs. Wardell on her appointment. Um, I, I believe that we'll get uh, consent, uh, but on her appointment to the uh, zoning board. She's a very uh, concerned citizen, and I'm sure that she will do a great job in, in that position. Uh, next, I would like to, we received something about Comcast, and it was brought up by one of the speakers. Um, what is it? I guess I'm uncertain as to what the status of our contract with Comcast is at this time. Uh, I know it was a, a back and forth thing, and then it just seemed to, I don't know, disappear. Uh, uh, it's in I, I, another thing that's probably in limbo somewhere. Uh, That's correct. So we're still operating under the that's prior correct. agreement. Mm -hmm. um, maybe that's, I, I realize that we have been dealing with any number of issues, but uh, perhaps uh, as we move toward 2013 and the, and the budget, maybe it's something that we can um, reopen and um, sort of, I'll, I'll say, renegotiate, uh, you know, that's acceptable to um, to all. I, I think it's something that really needs to be done. Uh, and lastly, uh, mention was made of Chief Davis and it's been made in the last couple of weeks. I, I will say I'm a friend of Chief Tom Davis um, and I, I just think that he's being misrepresented when people say that he has no concern for the city and for the welfare of the people in the city. Um, you may disagree with his operation of the fire department. Um, that's fine. But to question, to question his concern for the city of Scranton, this is a man that has spent his adult life uh, basically running into burning buildings and has been highly decorated for it. And I, I, I think that any statement that he has no concern for the city or the people in it is a, a, a misrepresentation of what his life has been. And um, any uh, other things I'll discuss uh, during the legislation. Thank you. Thank you. And Councilman Rogan, do you have comments or motions? Yes, thank you. And um, Mrs. Evans and Mr. McGough thanked all the candidates that ran, but the big thanks goes to the voters. Um, voter turnout was at record highs for Democrats, Republicans, Independents all across the country, which is great to see. Uh, I know Mr. Talamini mentioned he, he believes it was around 70%. I 
think we all hope for the day when we see 100% turnout in, in the election. And uh, that's what's great about our country, that we get to select our own leaders. And uh, if there's many other people across the world that wish that they had that privilege. A um, few things that I would like to discuss tonight. Um, the first one, and I usually try not to bring up newspaper articles too much, but this one did rub me the wrong way. As you know, City Council did ask the county commissioners to extend the discount period for taxpayers by one month. And um, it was brought up by myself and others at last week's meeting. And apparently Commissioner Wanzak uh, didn't like my statement. So the headline in the paper was County Blast City over tax discount comments. Now just to quote what was said in the paper, it says discount, Rogan Wanzak jab over help. And Commissioner Wanzak, who we have a difference of opinion on, on, on this issue of extending the tax uh, break, I never had a problem with Mr. Wanzak personally, but his quote is, my problem is with Pat. Well, that's fine, but it's not a personal battle here. We're, we're trying, to, trying to help our taxpayers. He goes on to say when he's saying that we're not helping the city, he's misinformed. Before he speaks, he should get the facts. Well, the facts were we, re we received a letter from the majority commissioner stating that they weren't going to extend the discount period. Mr. Wanzak then goes on to say that, you know, they have done other things to try to help the city. And I never said that he doesn't care about the city or he's not trying to help the city. I don't even think, and I'd have to look back in the minutes, but I don't think I mentioned any of the commissioners even by name. All I said was I was very frustrated that the commissioners didn't do for us what the city did and the school district did for them. With taxes going up on all levels of government, people need a little bit of help, especially the senior citizens in the community. So I, I am... I was upset about the article, just that it's, you know, it seemed to the commissioner that it was a personal thing, and it's not. I'm just trying to help the people of the city pay their taxes. A bright spot on this same issue is, I believe we all received this letter today. Um, this came from Patrick O'Malley, who's also a county commissioner. And it says, Dear Pat, as a Lackawanna County Commissioner, Scranton resident, and taxpayer, I, sp I am speaking on my own behalf. The City of Scranton requests that Lackawanna County to extend the first discount period from February 28, 2013 to March 28, 2013. This is the same option that the City of Scranton and the Scranton School District extended to the county in 2012. It's my view that this option should be granted to the City. I believe this extension will try to reduce the financial restraints the City is dealing with and the potential financial hardships that are being placed on the taxpayers. We are always talking about intergovernmental cooperation. I believe this would be a big first step in helping our city on the road to recovery. And he also goes on to say that if there's anything that he could do um, for us not to hesitate to contact him. And I, I do appreciate that. And so we've heard from two of the commissioners. And I'm hoping that uh, maybe Mr. O'Brien will, will come up to the table and step up and say, you know, I agree with uh, Commissioner O'Malley on this one and help out the city residents. And not only the city residents, but It'll also help with the county portion of the tax bill in the city. So, because we're, all three entities are raising taxes this year, unfortunately. Now, I opposed a lot of what was going on, and the idea of extending the discount period really will help a lot of people. And like I said before, it's mostly seniors that are on a fixed income that have their, are lucky enough to have their homes paid off at this point in their life. So I, I hope that there is some movement on that. And it is good to hear from Commissioner O'Malley, and we, we certainly thank him for that. Another article in the newspaper that I'll comment very briefly on, um, the mayor stated in um, the Saturday article, the Saturday political article, that he conducted a political poll that blamed city council for most of the issues that were going on in the city. I would challenge the mayor to release the results of those polls, number one. And number two, I would also hope that since the mayor, assuming his political action committee paid for it, that that poll would be listed on his campaign finance report that has to be reported at the end of this year. If not, it would be a violation of election laws. So I challenge the mayor to release the results of that poll. Anyone could say that a poll has been commissioned, but we would like to see the results because I know myself and Many of my colleagues, we speak to numerous residents, and whenever a poll is conducted, you hear about it. Mm -hmm. Because you're calling thousands of residents in the city of Scranton. 
and Scranton is a tight-knit community so whenever there is one people hear about it um, next on to a couple agenda items item 5b um, I will vote to introduce this legislation tonight I am hoping that we'll have a caucus um, or some informative uh, session yes. on this I'm going to okay that under motions. okay I agree with you and um, again you know there's and mr. Spragley touched on this also that you know for, for myself I want to look at the benefits of the refinancing versus you know the cost of additional debt you know for refinancing at a rate that's really gonna you know make a difference and save some money I think we should do it if we're not I think we should we shouldn't so I definitely want some more information on that but I will vote to introduce it um, as I stated last week many of the issues setting the tax rates except for the one that as mr. Joyce stated legally cannot be changed I will oppose um, I do think that should be done through the budgetary process and I will address well I might as well just do it now um, I, I echo what mr. McGough said about our, our new appointee assuming the votes go the way we think they will uh, Marianne Wardell to the zoning board um, I have known her since I've gotten involved in, in local politics and she's always been very insightful um, she's been very dedicated to the city having run for council coming to council meetings and um, I definitely think she'll be an asset to that board and finally on the issue regarding um, the liquor permit now at the end of the day when we have to make these decisions we always have to look at the benefit to the community or what it will do to hurt the community now from the residents I've talked to and I know some other council members have they oppose it I am hopeful that if it does pass it does you do do what you say you did you know you're going to do and it's not going to become a six-pack store and I believe you that that's not your intent but the residents and myself can't foresee a situation where if your initial vision doesn't work your business obviously you're gonna to have to cre create revenue somehow and a six-pack store would be perfectly legal under this permit so I will be opposing that and just to add on the one thing this city does not have a lack of is places to purchase alcohol you could go down almost any block in the city and there will be either a corner bar a six-pack store or a beer distributor and there are all different types of permits but um, that being said I will be voting no as I stated last week on that legislation and that is all for tonight thank you thank you and councilman Loscombe do you have any comments or motions tonight yes uh I'll make some comments on our legislation when it comes up but uh, just briefly I received a letter uh, that they asked me to read from the Kaiser Valley Citizens Association um, 101 North Kaiser Avenue and this this was addressed to Chief Davis uh, city of Scranton November 8th dear fire chief Davis thank you for attending our West Side fire safety meeting on October 17th sponsored by the Kaiser Valley Citizens Association it was unfortunate that the mayor mayor Darty did not also attend as you know a follow-up meeting was scheduled that evening and will be held on Wednesday November 14th again at the Kaiser Valley Community Center at 7 p.m. as you know residents of West Scranton are very concerned about the 82 percent recent closure rate of its only firehouse at 1917 Luzerne Street for the months of July August and September 2012 not only is this quite alarming West Granton residents feel this rate of brownouts is irresponsible and dangerous on the part of the city of Scranton we again invite you and Mayor Darty to attend our follow-up meeting on November 14th to discuss and review activity at our Luzerne Street firehouse since October 17th and into its future all we can ask is that the West Granton residents get no less fire protection from its Luzerne Street firehouse than any other section of the city anything less is unacceptable and considered a liability issue for the city by the residents of West Scranton respectfully yours Gary DeBilio president and just just to add to this uh, we had some discussion this evening with the bridge closings downtown engine 10 uh, coming from the mountain previously if, if there was a, something in the Petersburg area it would have to come all the way down uh, music Street and go back up Mulberry and over because uh, 
the they're not allowed the weight restrictions on the Harrison Avenue bridge uh, prevent us from running any fire trucks over that at this time now we have the Spruce Street complex closed it's it's pretty much a logistical nightmare responding to certain areas of the city and with engine 7 being out in West Scranton a lot of times engine 7 responds over to that side of town so we do have some major issues here with the closure of the, the firehouse on Main Avenue the f closure of the firehouse on Luzerne Street and another speaker mentioned the brownouts of, of engine 4 which is right here at fire headquarters the engine company that protects the downtown so there's a number of issues and and uh, again uh, more and more residents are, are getting up in arms and um, and and like like the letter said uh, the chief was at that meeting he answered a lot of questions he did assure them that he would be opening engine 7 but I don't believe that's happened yet after that meeting they actually had uh, um, the news media from Channel 28 actually did a tour of uh, the station on Main Avenue engine 9 and engine 7 and some issues were resolved by the city uh, it's still a work in progress and they also did air quality tests that uh, due to uh, scheduling conflicts conflicts this week on my part I haven't been able to ascertain whether those reports have come back yet and we're able to open those stations to the employees or the public at this time but we will be following up with that I will be at this meeting next week and um, hopefully more residents will come out and this is not just a west side issue uh, even though it's in west side and it's Kaiser Valley it is a citywide issue because the more fire stations that are closed in the city the less chance your station in your neighborhood stands to be there they may be responding to the other parts of town taking them away for longer periods from your neighborhood so this is an issue that affects every part of the city everyone should be there to ask questions and voice their opinion and get the correct information so everyone is welcome not just the Kaiser Valley residents to the Kaiser Valley Community Center next Wednesday night that's November 14th at 7 p.m. and hopefully uh, the mayor will will also appear and we'll be able to to resolve some issues and and personally I think one of the biggest issues was the return of the federal safer money of three and a half million dollars that would have maintained these stations for the next two years now people say what happens in two years well we'll cross that bridge when we get to it but we had a gift handed to us to protect us that was handed back to me that's irresponsible and someone has to answer for that if there is a tragedy but you know come next Wednesday ask the questions and hopefully get some answers and uh, that's all I have at this time and thank you councilman Losco councilman Joyce do you have comments or motions at this time yes um, briefly I just wanted to uh, congratulate all of the um, candidates who recently ran for election I know I'm running for election myself it's very long process and all of the candidates whether they won or they lost deserve to be congratulated for their efforts um, to begin tonight I'm going to address the single tax office Scranton City Council has received notification regarding the amount of funds collected and distributed as of October 31st for all the taxes that are collected by the office to inform, the taxes collected by the single tax office are current real estate taxes, delinquent real estate taxes from 2011 only, earned income taxes from the last quarter of 2011, as earned income taxes for this year, of course, are collected by Berkheimer, the local service tax, the business privilege tax, and the mercantile tax. Collection and distribution of these taxes are as follows. For the current real estate tax revenue, the single tax office had collected and distributed $12,032,819.31 as of October 31st. 
During the same period last year, the single tax office collected and distributed $11,197,165.34. This is an overall increase of $835,653.97, which is a 7.5% increase in revenue collected and distributed. For delinquent real estate tax collections, the single tax office had collected and distributed $490,579.10 as of October 31st. During the same period last year, the single tax office collected and distributed $582,436.52. This is an overall decrease of $91,857.42 which is a 15.8% decrease in revenue collected and distributed. For the local service tax, the single tax office had collected and distributed $1,178,397.63 as of October 31st. During the same period last year, the single tax office collected and distributed $1,400,330.63 this is an overall decrease of $221,933, which is a 15.8% decrease in revenue collected and distributed. For the combination of the business privilege and mercantile taxes, the single tax office had collected and distributed $1,776,331.98 of October 31st. During the same period last year, the single tax office collected and distributed $1,568,785.06. This is an overall increase of $207,546.92, which is a 13.2% increase in revenue collected and distributed. <clears throat> Secondly tonight, I'm going to address the collection of delinquent taxes by Northeast Revenue. As one knows, Northeast Revenue collects all delinquent real estate taxes with the exception of 2011 delinquent real estate taxes, which are collected by the single tax office, as I previously mentioned. For delinquent real estate tax collection, excluding 2011, Northeast Revenue collected and distributed $100,511.52 to the city of Scranton for the period ending on October 31st. Within these collections, the years 2004, 2005, and 2006 are included. Previously, 2004, 2005, and 2006 delinquent tax collections were sent directly to Penn Star Bank to pay for a loan that the Scranton uh, Redevelopment Authority previously defaulted on regarding the advanced sale of delinquent taxes. I've been informed that the remaining balance on the loan owed to Penn Star Bank is now paid off. Therefore, all remaining delinquent tax collections from now on will be distributed directly to the city. Third tonight, regarding the status of the audit, we've received an update from Rossi and Rossi regarding the audit status in Rossi and Rossi's January 26th letter. They had stated that in order to issue the December 31st, 2011 audited financial statements by May 31st of 2012, the outline of the 2011 audit timetable must be adhered to, which it was not. Because timetable had not been adhered to and because other matters in the BA's office have taken priority over getting the necessary information to Rossi and Rossi, the completion of audited financial statements has been delayed. As of October 31st, the actual actuarial calculation on the GASB 45 post-employment benefits that was to be provided by March 31st was not yet received. After receipt of this information and audit testing is completed, and assuming that the information does not require any further follow-up, Rossi and Rossi will issue um, complete or completed financial statements and present a draft of the full financial statements for review. From that point, the management and discussion analysis section of the audit report will need to be completed. In addition, attorney letters have been sent and Rossi and Rossi request that they respond with an effective date of November 15th. Once Rossi and Rossi receives the remaining information that is overdue, along with the attorney's responses to the audit request letters, 
the required city's, man city's management and discussion analysis of the financial statement and the city's representation letter, an exit conference will be held and the audit will be completed. Fourth tonight, I wanted to briefly discuss the 2013 operating budget. As everyone knows, 2013 is fast approaching, and the budget for 2013, as required by the Home Rule Charter, shall be sent to Council by November 15th. In crafting the budget this year, accordingly, the budget should follow suit with the recovery plan. However, it's not as easy as it seems. There are many important issues to be discussed, and we as a city have many challenges. One of the largest challenges is, to fu is funding the Supreme Court award that was ruled in the fire and police union's favor. This will be a cost of approximately $17.5 million to the city. Secondly, we have rising pension costs as the municipal or minimum municipal obligation for funding pensions is increasing by $5.1 million this year. Third, we must address the Scranton Parking Authority, which in the recent year has taken a toll on city finances. As a council member, my role is simply more to just vote on agenda items as they come by. There is hard work to be done. Knowing this, I'm meeting with our business administrator, Ryan McGowan, to discuss the budget tomorrow. In addition, I'm meeting with Ryan McGowan and Mayor Doherty on Monday over the holiday to discuss the budget further. Once the budget is complete, I am going to ask the administration to appear at council to present the budget to the public. Tonight I'm making a challenge to my colleagues to come with me to meet with the mayor and business administrator or meet them personally by themselves to discuss the budget. We must show unity to form the budget, and that includes every one of us. We owe it to the people of Scranton to minimize the tax increase the best way that we can. And finally tonight, I will comment about um, Big House Tobacco receiving um, the transfer of a liquor license. I was on the fence with this issue as um, some of my colleagues um, shared a concern that I had as well, that this may be a six-pack store. However, after hearing their presentation tonight, after viewing the photos of the establishment, and after hearing everything that they had to say, I don't believe that this will be a six-pack store, and I do that believe that this is a well-kept establishment and will be a good business and a good neighbor to the city of Scranton and its residents. And that's all. Thank you. Good evening. I wish to begin by thanking Harrison House Personal Care Home for its $500 voluntary payment in lieu of taxes to the city of Scranton. Perhaps other nonprofits will follow the example set by Harrison House and become good neighbors to our city and its taxpayers. On Monday, November 5th, City Council's office received a proposed ordinance drafted by City Solicitor Kelly for implementation of an amusement tax. It is extremely important that Solicitor Hughes and all council members review this ordinance and submit any revisions or amendments to Attorney Kelly on or before Monday, November 12th. The administration hopes to have this legislation included on the November 15th council agenda. Uh, Mrs. Craig, please send a memo to Attorney Kelly tomorrow morning asking for more specific identification of the amusement section on page one of the ordinance. For example, I cannot determine if he intends that high school athletic games, church fundraisers, and cancer fundraisers be taxed. The current language is very general and could lead one to believe that such events would indeed be taxed. Thus, there is need for more specific language or definition. Also, if any council member has suggestions 
and is interested in developing the 2013 budget, he must contact Business Administrator Ryan McGowan and schedule meetings with him and Council Finance Chair Frank Joyce as soon as possible. Councilman Joyce and I just received preliminary drafts of the budget in the last few days. And because the administration and council want to work jointly to produce a final draft, we have already scheduled budget meetings. I urge all council members to do the same. In compliance with the Home Rule Charter, the 2013 proposed budget will be submitted to the public and council by November 15th. Since the following Thursday, November 22nd, marks Thanksgiving, the budget will be placed into fifth order for introduction on Thursday, November 29th. Included on tonight's agenda in fifth order for introduction are two pieces of legislation, items 5B and C, pertaining to the second unfunded debt borrowing for 2012, which was recently approved by the court. The administration submitted both in the form of emergency legislation, but council will vote only on introduction this evening since merely the titles of the ordinances rather than the ordinances themselves were provided to city council and its solicitor prior to the Wednesday, November 7th deadline for publicly posting tonight's agenda. Consequently, Solicitor Hughes did not have the final documents to review and recommend to Council. As a result, the legislation may proceed to sixth order during the November 15th meeting, and at that time, Council may suspend its rules to place both ordinances into seventh order for final approval and adoption. In addition, In addition, I will ask Council Solicitor Hughes to explain the legislation publicly and respond to any Council members' questions at next week's meeting. Further, Council members may contact Attorney Hughes regarding any questions or concerns prior to the November 15th Council meeting. And uh, I would ask each Council member um, to Keep in mind that uh, we will be asking Attorney Hughes to present the details of this second unfunded debt legislation and the refinancing of bond series. And so I would ask that we either keep our comments to a minimum next week or defer our time to Attorney Hughes for his presentation. Um, also on our agenda this evening is a resolution to appoint Ms. Marianne Wardell to the Zoning Board to fulfill the unexpired term of the late James Williams Sr. Council members are in agreement with our honorable colleague, Councilman McGough's selection of Ms. Wardell, and we thank all those individuals who submitted letters of interest. Mrs. Craig, please send thank you letters to all applicants as soon as possible and invite each of them to reapply in June 2013 when City Council will make appointments to permanent seats on the Zoning Board. Next, I spoke with both Commissioner O'Brien and Tax Collector Bill Courtright in the last week regarding the City's request for an extension of the discount period for payment of 2013 real estate taxes. Unfortunately, Commissioner O'Brien does not believe the county can agree to the extension because doing so would lead to the inability to make payroll in March 2013, particularly in light of the fact that the county's 2013 tax anticipation note will merely fund the months of January and February, according to Mr. Durkin. Mr. Courtright stated that he would direct his solicitor to determine legally whether or not the single tax office can provide an extension for the city. 
and Mr. Courtright will contact me when the determination is made. Finally, Acting Police Chief Carl Graziano responded to the citizens' complaint of speeding in the 300 and 400 blocks of Cedar Avenue, and I'd like to read from his correspondence. These two blocks are not currently legally posted to issue traffic citations for speeding. However, DPW has been contacted to properly post these locations. These two blocks are already some of the most frequently patrolled areas in the city. The patrol division has been advised of the speeding complaints there, and once the signs are in place, they can issue speeding citations. City Council thanks Chief Graziano for his timely response to this problem. In addition, Mrs. Craig, please send a letter to the police chief regarding daily truck traffic in the Bellevue section of Scranton, which is a mine cave-in area. Residents report that truck traffic has continued for well over a decade despite the adoption of an ordinance in the 1990s prohibiting this. Trucks often pass police cars and are not stopped and cited, according to homeowners. Council requests that Chief Graziano would review the ordinance and recommend any changes that he deems appropriate, if necessary, in order that the police department can enforce the law, cite truckers, and prevent this daily problem. And that's it. 5B. An ordinance of the City of Scranton, Lackawanna County, Pennsylvania, setting forth its intent to issue one or more series of federally taxable and or tax-exempt general obligation bonds or notes of the city in, in an aggregate principal amount not to exceed $20,910,000, collectively the bonds, Pursuant to the Act of the General Assembly of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, PA CS 53, Chapters 80-82 as amended, known as the Local Government Unit Debt Act, the Act, finding that a private sale by negotiation is in the best financial interests of the city, determining that such bond shall evidence non-electoral debt of the city, specifying that such indebtedness to be incurred to provide funds for a certain project of the city consisting of all or any of the following. One, funding unfunded debt of the city. Two, refunding a portion of the city's outstanding general obligation bond, Series A of 2003. Three, refunding a portion of the city's outstanding general obligation bond, Series B of 2003. Four, refunding a portion of the city's outstanding federally taxable general obligation pension funding bonds, Series C of 2003. Five, refunding a portion of the city's outstanding federally taxable general obligation bonds, Series D of 2003. And six, funding necessary reserves and paying the costs and expenses of issuance of the bonds. Setting forth the reasonable estimated useful lives of the capital projects that are to be financed and refinanced by the bonds. Accepting a proposal for the purchase or arrangement of the private placement of such bonds at private sale by negotiation to financial institutions, qualified institutional buyers, and or accredited investors. Providing that such bonds, when issued, shall constitute a general obligation of the city. Fixing the denominations, series designations, dated date, interest payment dates, maturity dates, interest rates, redemption provisions, optional and mandatory redemption provisions, if applicable, and place the payment of the principal of an interest on such bonds. Authorizing specified officers of the city to contract with the paying agent for its services in connection with the bonds. Setting forth the substantial form of the bonds evidencing the debt. Authorizing execution and attestation of such bonds. Providing covenants related to debt service applicable to such bonds to the extent required by the Act and pledging the full faith, credit, and taxing power of the city in support thereof. Creating a sinking fund for each series of bonds in connection with such series of bonds to the extent required by the Act. 
designating the paying agent to be the sinking fund depository, providing a covenant to ensure prompt and full payment for such bonds when due, setting forth registration and transfer provisions with respect to such bonds, authorizing the execution of one or more investment agreements by specified officers of the city, if applicable, and the purchase of certain U.S. Treasury obligations or any other securities or investments in connection with the project and the refunding of the prior bonds. Authorizing and directing specified offers of the city to do, to take, and to perform certain specified, required, necessary, or appropriate acts to effect the issuance of the bonds, including without limitation the preparation of a debt statement and borrowing base certificate and the filing of specified documents with the Department of Community and Economic Development, all as required by the Act, declaring that the debt to be evidenced by such bonds, together with all other indebtedness of the city, will not be in excess of any applicable limitation imposed by the Act, authorizing proper officers of the city to deliver the bonds upon the approval of the Department of Community and Economic Development. If applicable, setting forth certain covenants precluding the city from taking actions which would cause the bonds to become arbitrage bonds or private activity bonds, as those terms are used in the Internal Revenue Code of 1986 as amended the code, and applicable regulations promulgated thereunder, authorizing the execution of a continuing disclosure certificate and covenant covenanting to comply with the provisions thereof, if applicable authorizing the execution of one or more escrow arrangements by and between the city and the escrow agent, agent named therein in connection with the refunding of the prior bonds, approving the form of and ratifying the preparation, use, and distribution of a preliminary placement memorandum and a placement mem memorandum by the purchaser or placement agent in connection with the marketing of the bonds, authorizing and directing the preparation execution and delivery of all other required documents and the taking of all other required action, providing when this ordinance shall become effective, providing for severability of provisions, and repealing all ordinances or parts of ordinances insofar as the same shall be inconsistent herewith. At this time, I'll entertain motion that item 5B be introduced into its proper committee. <coughs> Second. On the question. All those in favor of introduction, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Attorney Boyd is kindly offered to read this next week for me. <laughs> Could you read I was going to read it tonight, but I forgot. <laughs> 5C, authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to levy a real estate tax millage increase for a period of 10 years dedicated to retiring the unfunded debt incurred in calendar year 2012 in the amount of $9,750,000 and directing the city treasurer to separate the proper portion of the real estate taxes received from the single tax office during such 10-year period and forward same to a separate account to service and retire the unfunded debt. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5C be placed into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question, all those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. The ayes have it and so moved. 5D, accepting a $750 donation from Sanofi Pasteur presented to the City of Scranton Fire Department. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5D be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. Second. On the question. Yes, on the question, I would like to uh, thank Sanafi Pasteur for their continued uh, donations to the police and fire departments in the city. Thank you. Anyone else? All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5 E. Appointing Mary Ann Wardell, 629 Depot Street, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18509, as a member of the zoning appeals for the city of Scranton. Mrs. Wardell will fill the unexpired term of Jim Williams, who passed away on September 29, 2012. Mrs. Wardell's term will expire on July 1, 2013. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5E be introduced into its proper committee. 
So, so moved. Second. second. On the question. Yes, just on the question. I was the only one that hadn't spoken on Mrs. Wardell. Uh, I echo my colleagues on their comments. Um, Mrs. Wardell has been involved in, in city issues for many years. Uh, she stayed active at, at meetings and, and uh, up to date on a lot of, like I said, the issues that have been going on. Uh, we had several candidates uh, provide us with their letter of interest. And uh, I know it was a tough choice, but uh, hopefully, as Mrs. Evans stated, that they'll uh, reapply for the next opening because they are all good qualified candidates that were on that list. But uh, I would like to say I support Mrs. Wardell. Likewise. Anyone else? All those in favor of introduction, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Sixth order, 6A, reading by title, file of council number 65, 2012, an ordinance. Amending file of the council number 6, 1976, entitled an ordinance as amended, imposing a tax for general revenue purposes and the transfer of real property situated within the city of Scranton, prescribing and regulating the method of evidencing the payment of such tax, conferring powers and imposing duties upon certain persons, and providing penalties by imposing the rate of the realty transfer tax at 2 and 9 tenths percent for calendar year 2013. You've heard reading by title of item 6A. What is your pleasure? I move that item 6A pass reading by title. Second. On the question, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. The ayes have it and so moved. 6B, reading by title, file of council number 66, 2012, an ordinance, amending file of council number 7, 1976, entitled, an ordinance as amended, imposing a mercantile license tax of two mills for the year 1976 and annually thereafter upon persons engaging in certain occupations and businesses therein, providing for its levy and collection and for the issuance of mercantile licenses, conferring and imposing powers and duties upon the tax collector of the city of Scranton and imposing penalties by imposing the mercantile license tax at one mill for calendar year 2013. You've heard reading by title of item 6B. What is your pleasure? I move that item 6B pass reading by title. Second. On the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. The ayes have it and so moved. 6C, reading by title, file of council number 67, 2012, an ordinance. Amending file of council number 8, 1976, entitled, An Ordinance <coughs> as Amended, providing for the general revenue by imposing a tax at the rate of two mills upon the privilege of operating or conducting business in the city of Scranton as measured by the gross receipts therefrom, requiring registration and payment of the tax as condition to the conducting of such business, providing for the levy and collection of such tax, provide, prescribing such requirements for returns and records, conferring powers and duties upon the tax collector and imposing penalties by imposing the business privilege tax at the rate of one mill for calendar year 2013. You've heard reading by title of item 6C. What is your pleasure? I move that item 6C pass reading by title. Second. On the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. The ayes have it and so moved. 6D. Reading by title, file of council number 68, 2012, an ordinance, amending file of council number 17, 1994, entitled an ordinance as amended, authorizing the governing body of the city of Scranton to enact a waste disposal and collection fee for the purpose of raising revenue to cover the waste disposal and collection costs incurred by the city of Scranton for the disposal of refuse by imposing a waste disposal and collection fee of $178 for calendar year 2013. You've heard reading by title of item 6D. What is your pleasure? I move that item 6D pass reading by title. Second. On the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. The ayes have it and so moved. 6E, reading by title. File of council number 69, 2012, an ordinance. Amending file of council number 145 of 2007 entitled an ordinance renaming the emergency municipal services tax EMST 
to Local Service Tax, LST, and by imposing a withholding of $52 for the calendar year 2013. You've heard reading by title of item 6E. What is your pleasure? I move that item 6E pass reading by title. Second. On the question, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 6F, reading by title, file of council number 70, 2012, an ordinance to prohibit truck traffic with certain exemptions off Lake Scranton Road from Route 307 Northeasterly to Elmhurst Boulevard in the city of Scranton, directing <coughs> postage of signage and prescribing penalties for violation thereof. You've heard reading by title of item 6F. What is your pleasure? Move that item 6F pass reading by title. Second. On the question? Yes. Uh, while I have, am in favor of this legislation, as I said last week, I, I think there is a question about um, construction vehicles doing um, legitimate work in that area. And I may have been remiss in following up on that, but I, I think that there should be some type of amendment to this um, to allow for construction vehicles to you know, use that, that area. Um, and um, I, I think that should be added to the list of exemptions. Um, perhaps that amendment could be drafted by the uh, legal department and then uh, added at a future time. I think a great concern for us now is that due to Hurricane Sandy, we are going to see an increase in um, the amount of material coming into the landfill. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know that the residents of the area are very concerned about that increasing the already troublesome tr truck traffic on their streets. So I will be voting yes this evening. Is there anyone else on the question? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. I make a motion to suspend the rules to move item 6F to seventh order to be considered for final passage. Second. On the question? Yes, this is what I'm opposed to. Uh, I believe that we have the opportunity to make an amendment and to put it into the legislation and to vote on it next week. I don't, while there may be some urgency, I don't think a, a week on this legislation makes a difference. Anyone else? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. The ayes have it and so moved. For consideration by the Committee on Public Safety for adoption, file of Council Number 70, 2012, to prohibit truck traffic with certain exemptions off Lake Scranton Road from Route 307 Northeasterly to Elmhurst Boulevard in the City of Scranton, directing postage of signage and prescribing penalties for violation thereof. What is the recommendation of the Chair for the Committee on Public Safety? As Chairperson for the Committee on Public Safety, I recommend final passage of Item 7A. Second. On the question? Uh, once again, uh, I wish we had waited to uh, one week to do this. I, I obviously I am in favor of the legislation, and I will look into amending it in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Mr. Lascom? Yes. Sorry. Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7A legally and lawfully adopted. <laughs> no, I, I'm not opposed I make a motion to take file of council number 64 2012 from the table and place it in seventh order for final consideration. Second. On the question, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. The ayes have it and so moved. 7B for consideration by the committee on rules for adoption, file of council number 64 2012. 
approving the transfer of a restaurant liquor license currently owned by Kalani's Incorporated, trading as Little Nikki's Pasta House, 77 Fallbrook Street, Carbondale, Pennsylvania, 18407, license number R-14028, to Pass Rush LLC, for use at Big House Tobacco Outlet, located at 200 Greenridge Street, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18509, as required by the Pennsylvania Liquor Control Board. As chairperson for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of item 7B. Second. On the question? Yes, on the question. I guess I'll, uh, I'll make my comment at this point. Um, I sat here and listened to the gentleman uh, describe the business. I've never been in there. I've been by there many times. Uh, he answered every question that we had. No one came to the meeting afterwards in opposition. I did have phone calls regarding it that were neither for nor against. Um, you know, we're looking to, to build our tax base in the city and, and to bring business in. This business is already in a heavily business corridor. I, I just, uh, you know, that, that's something I consider. Um, but I sat here, as I said, and I listened, and, and I believe in all honesty he's trying to do the best for this business in this area based on what's, what he's done in the past three years, and I take a man for his word. And, uh, you know, I was swayed at that point when they described what their intention was, and I believe him, and uh, especially after seeing the photos of the property and, and what type of business it currently is. So I will be voting in favor of this business. Thank I, you. I'd just like to say I, I think there is uh, still some uncertainty about the operation and nature of the business and the effect that it will have on the community and I, I don't believe that those questions were necessarily adequately answered for me. I would echo what Mr. McGough said. Um, I don't think anyone doubts that everything will be done legally, um, but legally this permit can, you can operate a six-pack store under it. Maybe that's not the intent currently, but it can legally go there if this is approved by city council. And at the end of the day, and at, at the end of the day, I usually try to base my vote on what's best for the community. And we all know the residents in that neighborhood. Um, and uh, the bulk of them I talked to were, were against it. So I, I will be voting no. And as I stated before, there isn't a lack of places to purchase alcohol in the city of Scranton. Um, I'll, I'll just add quickly to that, that surrounding this particular business are bars and beer distributors so that if that is the uh, intention of this business, I, I don't know that it would be very successful just, you know, based on those circumstances. Um, the CEO insists that uh, the purpose is not for the sale of uh, six packs, uh, et cetera. And I do believe that uh, he has established a very productive, well-maintained business that has encountered very few, if any, problems over the past three years. I, too, spoke with some residents, and uh, one was uh, concerned about the transfer of the liquor license. The other two basically had no concern. Uh, they really didn't care whether the license would be granted or not because they said the business has never been a problem for them. And so I would just ask, as I did during the public caucus, that Mr. Fadden would reach out to those in the neighborhood to alleviate any of their concerns uh, and I will be voting to approve. Is there anyone else on the question? 
Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? No. Mr. Rogan? No. Mr. Loscom? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7B legally and lawfully adopted. And if there is no further business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. This meeting is adjourned.